welcome to another episode of The Clever Clarinetist. I'm your host, Dr. Larkin Sanders. Today's episode is all about the Kansas All-State Audition Music for this cycle. It's the year 2022, and I've heard rumors that it's all about to change next year, so I'll have to make all new videos next year. It's fine. This year's repertoire comes from Baber's Second Clarinet Concerto. So we're gonna go over every single little note in this piece and how to deal with all of the things. If you'd like to hear me play all this stuff, it's in a separate video. And there will be a link to it at the end of this video. Or if you'd like to go check it out now, I recommend clicking the link below in the description or to the side in the description, visiting my channel or finding it in your own particular way before we get started in this. As we track every single little note in this piece, I'm going to shift the screen over so that you can also see me working and marking the music on my iPad as we go along. Feel free to screenshot it for all the notes and to apply everything you want to your own music and performance. I don't care if you totally copy off of me. In fact, I've judged this audition before, so I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of what the judges are looking for. Okay, so the selections that we're working with here are from the slow movement, the romanza, and the final movement, which is the polaca. And I've always thought this excerpt from the romanza is really strange because it's the recitative section, which is really difficult if you are not familiar with this term. So it says recit, which is short for a recitative, and a recitative is an opera thing. It's, uh, it's something that happens between like orchestral use and oftentimes if you've ever been to the opera especially in Mozart and like Rossini and all these like romantic and classical operas you'll hear these moments where it's just like sing 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 chord 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 sing sing chord and it, it just sounds like this really weird back and forth thing with the keyboard and sometimes with the orchestra and the singer it's very free it's very flowing and it's typically used to like progress the action along in, an, in like the drama of an opera. So now this is a clarinet concerto. Why? Because Weber was really famous for writing operas. So if you're curious about Weber's operas and the things that made him famous when he was alive, go check out things like Deflator Mouse and enjoy. So knowing this, we can kind of channel our inner opera diva. So we'll just make a note. Opera <laughs> Diva. Amazing. It's solo and lento. Lento means real slow. Like maybe the slowest marking we have in music. So, and also we have this ad lib. And ad lib means kind of to improvise. I mean, you can really do technically whatever you want with this section, but we do kind of have our expectations of what to hear in Weber and Whoever is listening to you, you is going to be really familiar with this piece, most likely going to be a clarinet player themselves who have studied this piece before and they know what it's supposed to sound like. So I recommend also going to listen to a bunch of other recordings of this concerto in its entirety so you can kind of get a feel for it. Um, not just my recording where I'm by myself. It really feels weird playing it out of context, so I, like, I empathize with you. I know this is hard. Um, so you start on this piano E and you've got a fermata so you can hang on to it for a while and you can kind of play these little 16th notes out of time don't get scared because they're 16th notes they kind of will go by slowly da, dee, 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 dee. I always think of this section in eighth notes so subdividing is gonna be critical and this next fermata comes on an eighth note as well da da we have a sforzando so that means that high A is going to be suddenly loud, and then you're going to decay pretty quickly from that high A. Again, it's under a fermata, so you can hold it as long as you want. And again, don't be scared of the 16th notes. You've got time. Dee dum ba dum ba dum. Use the eighth note pulse to really guide you in these sections where you actually have some movement. And you do want to have a pretty good um, pulse with your eighth note here so you can also count through the rest. It's not that critical that you play the rest in time, but you don't want to, you definitely don't want them to be too short. Definitely, um, verge on the side of too long for the rest than too short. Because if you play them too short, it just sounds like you have no idea what you're doing. Um, 
So yeah, if anything, count them straight through as two eighth notes each or give yourself a little bit of a amount of time on them. And now don't lose track of your eighth note pulse. Da, bleh, da, 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 right? Da, ugh. Da, da, scooch over. Da, di, da, da. And this D, I would take a long time on because it's kind of hard to do that octave jump. I might even consider scratching out that slur because it's really hard to slur from such a high note to such a medium note. Um, and you run a high chance of squeaking out that D if you slur it. So I would recommend if you're scared of it, if it's not working for you, just take out the slur so that you can successfully make that jump. Da, D. And so for this little section, I kind of think of this agitato starting right on this D. So this dotted eighth note and sixteenth note are still a little bit out of time, but right when you hit that D, D, D to C sharp sixteenth notes, that's like a new pulse, agitato. Agitato is um, a cardinate, it means agitated. So da 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 and you can kind of move a little bit faster. You can do a little accelerando. Make sure that you've got a pretty solid 16th note pulse. Da da da. D. Da da da. Ooh, that's an ugly line. Da da da. Da da da. Da da da. da. And you might think of it with some forward motion. You definitely don't want to slow it down, but you can do a little cello rondo if you're feeling spicy. And you have a nice fermata on that eighth note rest. Take advantage of it, collect your thoughts, and think about a new pulse for this maestoso section. And maestoso uh, means what you probably think it means, like majestic. Uh, so, or majestic, or um, like heavy and heavily emphasized. So I tend to think, of, I still think you need to maintain your eighth note pulse, but um, for the first little bit, um, the, 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 for the first little bit, think of your quarter note in eighth notes and then when you get to this whole note, really do your best to hold it for all eight counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Um, that whole note is really long. And you really, again, you want to err on the side of too long over not long enough. Ideally, you'll hold it exactly the right amount of time. And it'll line up with the pulse you established on that B flat quarter note. But do your best to hold it out for all the counts. I recommend keeping yourself in eighth notes, even though it's such a long note, because the section following it is just full of 30 second notes. And 30 second notes are really hard to count under quarter notes, but they are not so bad to count under eighth notes. So each one of these groups of four is equal to an eighth note. Um, I think if Weber were alive today and knew what feathered notes were, that he would write this as a feathered passage. I think every recording I've ever heard and every performance I've ever heard, they take the, a lot of liberties with this. Remember, you're still in a recitative, so you can um, still channel your inner opera diva. You just have to do it deliberately. If you do it in kind of a lazy way, we can hear it. We can hear it when you're doing it in a way that like screams insecurity. The key is just to play it confidently and to just go for it. But you have to be confident in it and you have to convince us that what you're doing is the right thing to do. Um, so you'll even hear in my recording that I don't just dive in and go, because that's kind of lame, let's be honest. Um, I kind of take my time and I count through it. Um, and the reason I believe that this would be a feathered thing if Baber were alive today is because of this lovely set of sextuplet 30 second notes. Uh, with that grace note in there, uh, it's really just 
a rhythmic accelerando. So we're getting the accelerando from the rhythm and not from the word accelerando. So I would think of it that way. Continue to play this like an accelerando. And subdividing this, this sextuplet sex 30 second notes with a grace note in it is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> it's really hard to do. So we're just going to kind of push through it. Of course, you can break up your sextuplet into groupings. You might think of it um, as three plus three with that grace note in there. Um, for me, that grace note really messes things up, so I actually don't think of it that way. I group it in pairs or threes with this one grace note. Da dum bia da, da dum bia da, da da dum. Da da bia da ba da ba. Um, that works for me. It helps me organize everything, and it keeps everything in these like tight little categories. Um, and again, it's a little bit like an accelerando. So if you're starting from the beginning of that measure, da 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 da. You just kind of want to push through that ending as fast as you can. Um, and don't forget that that grace note is a B flat because we have this B flat earlier in the measure. So it's not even that hard. You just have to give it a little, your register key a little flick after that point. Da da bia da 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 bia da 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 me me. And so after this low C sharp can take a moment, take a breath, and also recognize that we are seeing a section in molto adagio, which is kind of like Lindo, very, very slow. So we're definitely gonna wanna maintain our eighth note pulse. Da, 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 da. Scooching over. Da, dee, dee. that rest for two clicks and then here if you want to be a little bit stylish you can do a little retard on no you don't have to you can also just play the time da, de, da, de, 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 de. yeah and pianissimo fortunately this is a really easy register to play an actual pianissimo in so take advantage of this and play it real quietly that'll be wonderful and make sure you're hitting an E here. It's not an F, definitely an E. <laughs> definitely heard a lot of auditions where they accidentally played an F there. So make sure you're playing right notes. All right, so those are basically all my thoughts on this uh, recitative from the Romanza movement of the, <laughs> of the Weber Second Concerto. Um, I'll give you some metronome markings too for that area. Da, da, dee, da, da, da. Okay, so we'll call that here. We're doing eighth note equals 76. And here, the, the agitato, you kind of can make that choice yourself if you don't want to do an accelerato though. We'll call that eighth note equals 120. And this is my stoso section. What should we call you? We'll stick with that as well. The same eighth note equals 120 that we had at the agitato. So if you're looking to make sure that you're maintaining some kind of pulse in time, you can practice these sections with your metronome. Um, as they say in Jurassic Park, hold on to your butts. <laughs> it's really hard to play this well. Um, listen to a bunch of recordings. That's honestly the best thing you can do for yourself. Listen. 
There are so many good recordings of this piece anyway, and it's so fun to listen to really great clarinet players doing their stuff. Weber wrote his concertos um, collaboratively, or at least symbiotically, with our very own <laughs> Heinrich Behrman, uh, father of Carl Behrman. So this is like a dynasty of great clarinet players. So he worked really closely with this guy and he wrote it in a way that is fun for clarinet players, a little bit challenging, but mostly like it, it just really shows what the clarinet can do well. So enjoy it. Let's talk about this polaka. So polaka um, basically means polka, although this uh, movement might not remind you of a polka very much. It doesn't exactly, for me, it doesn't channel the sounds of like <laughs> the accordion and tubas and drums and dancing and people in lederhosen, but maybe it does that for you. And if so, great. Um, you'll see, at least in my ed edition that I got off of, excuse me, off of IMSLP, it says corner note equals 100. And I can play this at about 100. That's kind of where I top out. Um, but with fast things, you want to make sure that you're playing it successfully and if you can't play that 100 you should play it slower i think a really good goal for uh for younger people especially but i don't know why i put a dot there is probably more like 80 or to 88. i don't think you should push yourself into 100 unless you just feel really really good about your technique and that this is basically easy for you let's face it it's not easy for anybody um, so make sure that you're settling into a metronome tempo or a tempo into a metronome that you can successfully play. If that means while you're just starting that you need to practice it at 60, oh lord, do it. The, the longer you can stay slow, uh, the better it'll sound when you start speeding it up. As, as, oh, don't you hate it when you run out of space? Okay, great. So we start off back syncopated, right? Da, da, dee, dum, da, blah. Da, da, dee, dum, ba, 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 ba. So make sure you're evenly spacing these notes and that you are playing it nice and syncopated. Dum, da, da, dum, da, da, dum. And another thing about this. <laughs> we have a lot of staccato notes over all these 16th notes, and but don't be tempted to play them short and pecky. In my most humble opinion, and I know there will be people out there that disagree with me, but to each their own, to me there is only one kind of articulation in clarinet playing, and it's legato. Uh, I say this because I believe style and shortness come with speed. And when you play this piece up to tempo, if you're using a legato tone and you practice the legato tone, chances are it's gonna be really clean. And as you get faster, the notes are gonna kinda of shorten up and it's kinda of gonna have that like more stylistic feeling as it gets faster. So don't be seduced into playing really short staccatos. Play your tongued notes legato. It'll be cleaner, you'll thank me later, I promise. Especially when you get to something like this. So you only have it's a slur two tongue two combination. Right? C B flat. Make sure you're playing a B flat here. I know that makes this <laughs> really difficult to go from a C to a B flat. Do your best. Play with a lot of air. Lean into this sforzando. Right? Ah! Don't do that. Think of it as a crescendo. And if, as long as you're doing a nice big crescendo and adding air to this, then it'll come out really well. And then when you get here, you'll see I have notated a little L over the C. Um, that was for me because I always forget to do this. You should be playing this C on the left hand. So you can play this D flat on the right hand, C on the left hand, D flat on the right hand the C again on the left hand, and so you can add your pinky for that high D. 
definitely are going to need that because if you don't put your pinky down for that high D, it'll make the D sound really flat and the interval won't be large enough and your four judge is going to be like, whoa, who, what happened? So make sure you are planning ahead for that pinky. Um, if you didn't know you need to have your pinky down, well, in the altissimo on clarinet, every note after a C sharp needs to have a pinky vent. So that refers to your E flat, A flat keys. Make sure for that high D you have your E flat, A flat key pressed with your pinky. And don't panic about this weird rhythm. It's not as weird as it looks. Dum dum da da dum da da dum da. Dum dum da da dum da da dum da. If you want to practice it really slowly, use eighth note pulses. Dum dum da da dum da da dum da. And you'll be great. Um, or you can just kind of groove with it like I do. Dum bum ba da dum da da dum da. I'm such a beautiful singer. So pretty. All right, and then we have the exact same first two measures of this line that we had the line before. Check that out. Same thing, so don't get scared. It's the same. It doesn't change till the third measure. Bum, 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 ba da dum, ba da. Dee dee dee. Da 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 da. So we have this dotted rhythm here. Da da dum, ba da. Da 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 da. Make sure you are playing that. Dotted 16th note with the 32nd note after it should have a very snappy feel to it. It's not a mistake, not an error. All right, and this is my favorite part of the opening because we have this two voice figure going on. So these low E's, you want to honk those suckers out. You want to play them basically as loud as you can. If forte doesn't feel like enough for you, add some F's. <laughs> because what's important here is that you get a good contrast. It's really hard to play these notes piano. So you might have to kind of bump up the um, the volume here. You might have to think of it as more of mezzo piano or maybe even mezzo forte to get the notes to come out. It's really important that they come out and that there is a big contrast between these two dynamics. So make sure that even if you're kind of bumping up the volume for that high C, that there is a big difference between that low E and the high C. And you have this nice big crescendo to lead you into that forte, C mo, C, C mo, however many fortes you need, low F. And then this piano, mezzo piano, mezzo forte, high C that you have after that will be subito again. I don't know if I wrote that down before. Let's give it a subito. Very good, body bum. So we had this figure a few times, this D sharp E C. Um, you can still play the C with the right pinky if you want. You don't have to use your left hand one unless you're just feeling adventurous. Um, there's no need because you don't have any D sharps after the C. Again, don't take these long notes for granted. Make sure you're holding them long enough. It really annoys judges when you mess up <laughs> the easiest part, um, which is like holding a note. Just, just make sure you count. Hold it for the right amount of time. <laughs> and I already drew in lines for that G because I messed that up too, because we just had these half notes and then this quarter note tied to a dotted sixteenth note is a lot shorter. So subdivide it if you need to. If you need to think of it in eighth notes, by all means, go for it. Um, whatever it takes. For me, I just want to make sure that I make I get the groupings out at the right time, so that this this G and this G happen on their beats. And it might also help you to leave out that. Um, slur or that tie right at the beginning of A so you get used to it. I also kind of rearrange the slurs a little bit. This is the thing about articulations and Weber. Um, Weber didn't write any like articulations. Uh, he just wrote notes and harmonies. Uh, so any articulations we see in this are the notes of an editor um, who was probably a famous clarinet player <laughs> and probably wrote them with good reason. But if you feel the need to kind of adjust your articulations to make your life a little bit easier, 
that is actually acceptable. You don't want to do it too much um, because there might be some judges who are real sticklers for playing the print on the page. Um, I know if it were me, it wouldn't bother me. Um, so use your best judgment and work with your private teacher to make sure that you're doing exactly what you should be doing. But dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ta 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 is how I play it. Ta ta ha ta ha ta ha ta ta. <laughs> but the writing is ta 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 ha ta ta. <laughs> so just be intentional about it. Make a decision and write it in. I wrote it in mine. You can write in yours too. Da 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 da. So I know when we played Mozart last year, Grace Notes meant an entirely different thing. But here is just a little flip. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. It happens right before the groups. Um, if it's really bothering you, just take it out or add it in discretionally. Um, the important thing here is making sure you get your rhythm right. If you don't play the grace note, um, the judge might be confused, but I don't think they're going to like write you off for skipping a grace note. Da ba 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 so this B, is, or this trill, is B to C. Um, and you have this A to B grace note to get you out of it. Da da da. I might write in a little note to myself just so that my eyeballs know I land on a C. Because um, that's a really fast movement. Ba yum, ba dum, bum, ba dum, 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 ba dum. And this is probably the hardest part this whole introduction is making this weird snappy snap rhythm happen and a lot of people including me do a stylish little retardando for the last measure of it um not only does it make it a little bit more musically interesting but it makes it a lot easier to play <laughs> so if this is really hard for you consider adding in a little retardando but then once you get to this high C, make sure you are on tempo. So you are right back in time. Da 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 da. Oh my god. Bum ba dum 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 da di da yum ba ba bi dum ba 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 ba. Yeah. So as long as at the last measure of that line you are right back in tempo, it is okay to take a little retardando right before that. You have one more little snap. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of those rhythms in this, so make sure you're catching them. They're not mistakes. They should feel snappy. Um, just kind of get in the groove of it, and you'll be just fine. All right. Let's talk about the coda. What fun. It's like, once you get really good at clarinet, <laughs> this is actually pretty idiomatic and it lays really well on the fingers, but I can imagine for someone who is 15, 16, 17, 18, this is very scary. It's very fast. If we maintain the tempo from the beginning, right, we had 100 beats per minute, I can't even play it. At 100. I know there are plenty of famous clarinet players who can, and maybe if I practice this every day for months, I would be able to do it. But I kind of top out at 88, and you can probably clock me in on my personal recording, it'll probably land you right at 88. Um, if you need to play this section a little bit slower than the beginning, that's okay. I've also heard recordings where people get to this solo section and um, they take the tempo back a little bit, and that's acceptable. Um, so don't fret if you can't play this section as fast as you could play the beginning. It's not a big deal. It's okay to play it a little bit slower. Um, and just like the beginning, you'll want to pick a tempo that is successful for you. So pick something where you can play all the notes. Okay, so these groups can be divided up into two groups of three each. So we have this little F major chord and then a little chromatic thing in each and they're the same every time the same the same yeah 
So don't worry, once you get one of these down, you can play all three of them in this measure. And then, the next measure is where the pattern gets a little quirky. Um, so you can see I have added an R and an L for my pinkies. It doesn't matter which way you go, you can go L, R, R, L. Just make a decision so that you don't get caught off guard when you get to that section. Go ahead and write it in now. And don't forget that we have B flats, because that kind of throws a wrench in things. And then for this last one, it changes. D flat carries in the measure too, don't forget that. Um, we have C to B flat instead. So make sure you're catching that pattern change and making either a note of it or just never forgetting. <laughs> I would make some kind of note, like I've circled it, um, put a little R over that seam, do something. Something else I forgot to mention is that the, the section starts off in pianissimo and the next time you see it, so this, blah, the last measure of that line starts in forte, it's just supposed to give a little bit of contrast, it's the exact same notes. Um, so the first two measures of the section are repeated, just at forte instead of pianissimo. If it is too hard for you to play all these notes at pianissimo, bump it up. Bump it up, and bump up this forte as well. Because the most important thing about these dynamics is that there's contrast. Um, it's not that you have to meet the specific uh, formula for piano and the specific formula for forte. It just has to sound different. The first section has to sound softer than the second one, right? It's going to be easier to play a forte as well, so hold on to your butts. Um, and we have the same issue here with this B flat. We land on this A. Um, if you have time, you can take a breath, but you can't let your breath disrupt the time. So keep it going. If you could wait until this section here, that would be better. <laughs> but do what you got to do, right? And these are kind of, I think it's pretty obvious that they're in groups of three because of the way the slurs are set, but that's how I would think of it, if you need it. Oh, I didn't mark these up here. I would think of these in groups of three, too. When you're learning it, you'll probably want to subdivide it into eight notes so that every note's in its right place. These, these lines, unfortunately, aren't gestural. They are melodic, so we do actually need to hear all the notes. <laughs> so sorry. We must play all the notes and at the right time. <laughs> Make sure you're playing B flat here, B natural there, and then we have just a nice big F major scale. Once you know how to play your F major scale, this measure is going to be no problem. Lands on G. It is really easy to rush through simple patterns like this. So make sure that you're anchoring each group where it starts. A da 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 E da 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 F da da G. <laughs> I know that was a great demonstration with my voice. Uh, but you know what I mean. Same with this chromatic scale. You can't just rip through it. It does have to be in time. We have one scale we get to rip through and it doesn't happen until the very end. So Make sure that you're coming right off the beat. <laughs> That's so fun. Um, so giving these first notes of every every grouping a little emphasis will help, and this is just a chromatic scale. Until what ha I'm losing my mind until you get to this little bracket that you've seen already outlined. Um, C sharp, D, E, so there are no chromatic notes here. And we land on F. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, don't rip it. Make sure you land exactly on beat one of the next measure after that scale. Um, it's really important. All right, and then we have these beastly little F major noodles. Um, these are all like little F disrupted F major chords. So you can see with the exception of these notes, 
we are seeing F's, A's, and C's, which means we're re we really are just noodling around in F major. Um, and then these little notes interrupt everything and kind of push it forward. So, something that can really help practice the, with practicing is obviously going really slow. I also change the articulation. Ta, 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 ta. I don't I don't do as long a slur as they have written and that might help you it helps me kind of compartmentalize where all the notes go um, but I know that's not necessarily helpful for everyone so if you like the articulation go for it you could also slur all of these if you wanted um, I think when you slur everything it kind of opens you up to more messiness um, I feel like articulating some of the notes creates interest and kind of cleans some stuff up. Uh, but to each their own, if you're really worried about making that articulation happen, just slur it. Just go for it. And after we have all these F major noodles with passing tones, we have this lovely 5-7 <laughs> chord in, well, 5-7 of F, um, which is C7. That just means we're gonna have C's, B flats, G's, and E's repeated over and over again, all the way down, all the way back up. So if you're playing one of those four pitches in that measure, you're probably doing okay. And make sure you give the C here when you land a nice big emphasis to kind of anchor yourself and move forward in that chromatic scale. Da 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 F sharp, and then here's another C seven chord. Yeah da 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 da. And if that articulation is too much, of course, you can just slur the whole thing. Not a big deal. Um, again, if articulation makes you anxious, consider skipping it. Um, if you can handle it, I really recommend doing it because it's really stylish and it's really fun to listen to. And then we have some F major scales to close it out. So just have F major to D. Again, make sure you're anchoring yourself on the beginning of these groups. Da 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 So there's always a fine line between like anchoring yourself and like really hammering the downbeat. You don't want to hammer the downbeat. You just want to show that you're playing the rhythm that you know where the notes belong and that you do have pulse. Um so the best way to know whether or not you're hammering the notes too hard it is by recording yourself so make sure you're, you're recording yourself as you're preparing this music so that everything sounds the way you think it sounds and the way you want it to sound all right we're almost there and here's the one scale we get to rip and again this is another example of Weber would love feathers because the final note at the top of this is an F um, so it's just an F major scale and he really didn't wanted you to start slower and get faster as you move to the top of the scale. That's that's the goal of this, not to have a regimented da 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 Again, sometimes it's hard for my eye to move from one line to the other, so I often make myself a little note, especially when the phrase ends, because that's where I land. And we are in three. Um, sometimes after playing lots and lots of sextuplet 16 notes, I get disoriented, and I sometimes get to this part of the piece and think I'm in 6-8, which is not true. <laughs> we are not in 6-8. We are still in 3-4. Really important. C and the C trill. I know some of you are like, what the heck? You use the side key. You use the um not the very top trill key, but the the third trill key. The one, two, three. Is there a four? And the highest one is number four. You use number three. Third. So C to D, C, and then 
lower is E. E. And this last one, this high E, is E to F. And don't forget that F is just with the pinky. You just add that pinky key that's right up next to your third finger. E, F, D, D, D. Sometimes this F comes out really flat. So you might want to add the sliver key, the fork key. I always draw a little fork when I need to add the sliver key, but you don't have to. Um, I do it because my F is a little bit flat. And how do you find that out? Try it out with your tuner. See how it goes. You might need to add that little sliver key on the right hand. And then you're done. The rest of the notes of this are cues. It says tutti, uh, because that means everybody. In theory, you could play those notes if you wanted to, if you're playing in an actual concerto setting with an orchestra, um, but, but why? But why would you do that? You just play all these dang notes and you get to be done. And you end on this dramatic high F, so be done. All right, there you have it. Um, that is all that you need to know about <laughs> Weber's second concerto as it pertains to the Kansas All-State auditions this year in 2022. I hope this was helpful. If you want extra help, if you'd like to sign up with a lesson for me, please visit my website, cleverclarinetist.com slash lessons to book a lesson um, and to get some one-on-one -on -one help from yours truly. I'm happy to help you. Um, I want everyone to have successful auditions and we can make that happen. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.